No. Okay, 
cars.
Come on.
Hey, way to locate the ball, bud. Good job. Good there, bud.
Sharp catch. Very sharp. Yeah, I saw your 
No. Back and drive, y'all. One, two. I can't. You have to do it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Bobcats, double play now, come on. Marcy, ready. When the battle no
Look over there, Noah. No, stay loose, kids, stay loose.
We see you back there, buddy. We see you. Okay, work through it now, work through it. No.
Be ready, baby. Be ready. No. 
Boston. Yeah, Cooper Hall now.
turn that, Jay. Come on. Advance those runners. Let's go. Load early. Load early, kid. Let's go. Get that back going. Exceptional balance, Blue. Exceptional balance there. Thank you. I noticed that. I thought what you did there. Very nice. With that new pair of knees. <laughs> Come on, Jay. Come on, crank it. I know. Guys, second one down for me.
Three up, three down, Bobcats.
All right, Bobcat Nation. It's a beautiful day. Sunny South Lake, Texas. Trophy Club Bobcats versus the South Lake Dragons in game two after Bobcats took the first game seven to six. Lit up batter for the Dragons, Hunt, number 13. And we welcome you to the broadcast. Jimmy Gabbard is uh, coming back shortly after taking a, a bio break. And Chris Kirazizis, our producer, is beside as well. We have a high fly ball hit to right field, easily handled by the Bobcats with the first out. Top of the first, one out, number three, Noel, coming up to bat for the South Lake Dragons. And on the mound, we have Connor Grzisi's pitching for the Bobcats. Looking sharp so far. Throws high and outside for a count of 1-0. Go, Connor! Nice pitch to make it 1-1. One, one. Evens up the count. One, one. Good. You're just joining us, we welcome you to the Bobcast Nation broadcast. One out here on the top of the first, kind of 1-1. One, one. Mr. Tony. All is thrown for 2-1. Hey, Jimmy, welcome back from your bio break. How you feeling? Fantastic, how are you? Oh, living the dream. So this is game two of a doubleheader. That's correct. I did note that for our viewers. The you millions did? who are tuning in. The millions? Millions who are tuning in from around the country. Wow. <laughs> All right, so you want to go over positions or did you already do that? Go ahead. All right, with the Bobcats in the field, we got Connor on the bump. We got Cannon behind the dish. That is a swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. We got Gage at third. We got Noah at short. Pierce at second. Carson at first. Looks like we had Coop out there in right field. We got Big Noah in center. And Big Brody in left field. And we got one down? We got two down, Jimmy. Oh, I missed them out. Top of the first. Two outs. Interesting. Connor is commanding the bump pretty well. Ooh. Just inside for a ball. One no. So I'm assuming we have the link for the game two. I sent the link out to my circle. You have a circle? I do have a circle. Oh. Huh. So we need to uh, give a shout out to Nana and Dwayne. Nana and Dwayne watching from home. Glad to have you. Uh huh. Get Showing a, bunt. Showing bunt. There's a walk. And there's the first walk of the ball game. And no damage done. Connor's already retired too. Yep. And uh, <clears throat> now have two options for outs on a hit. Here's pitch. High ball. And to our left, the skipper is talking to his pitcher, calming him down. Mr. Producer, how are you today? He's good. Oh, he's, he's, he's in command right now. He's good. Special thanks to Chris for getting this set up again. There's a throw to second, and runner's safe. I'm not sure everyone's aware, Jimmy, of how much work Chris does to get this whole setup going to view the ball games. It's uh, yeah, highly appreciated. He's done it for for a long time with the Bobcats or with the previous teams. Yep. Yeah. It's uh. He's got it worked out. Fantastic. Indeed. A lot of technical issues. He works more out before the game starts and 
appreciate that because it allows so many people at home to watch the game now. They can hear what's going on. Soft the hit shot. ball to second base to get the out at first, and that will retire the side. Three outs, no damage done. Score remains 0-0 zero, zero as we go into the bottom of the first inning. Kind of look good. They look real good. Kind of did look very good. Had piece of control. Lost a batter on a walk, but maintained mental acuity and uh, got the job done. Did you say mental acuity? Mental. I, I know those multisyllabic words. Multisyllabic. Uh, that word doesn't you don't, sound... You don't appreciate the vocabulary, but... Uh, My wife would. I know she would. I appreciate Melanie for appreciating. For appreciating what you appreciate? Yeah. Yeah? Yes, That's all you have? I got nothing. Wow. <laughs> Speaking all of right. which, where is your far better half today? Um, she is... In Gabbardville. Okay, Gabbardville. She's studying. She's got finals here pretty soon. She's excited for it. I know she's working on what, a master's? Master's in seminary. Yep. That is awesome. Yep, yep. It's very interesting talking to her and just the, the in-depth theological conversations we have is just incredible. Probably it's appropriate to say that that degree and divinity is a blessing. I can't believe you just said that. Wow. I hope she's listening to this and hearing this. I know she's shaking her head. But yes, it's really cool. Yes. Admirable. Um, I have no idea. They... I wouldn't think so. Right? Yeah, I think I think, I think so. Yes. Where's the nectar? Holy crap! And here comes Coach Dave. I love for those field interview. I think so. How are you feeling about uh, about this game? Yeah, I'd kill those balls. What are you going to change <laughs> up in this game to make that happen? You didn't get one? Ten round, I like that. Well, whatever the run rule is, I like to It is a, <laughs> well, I know it's five per inning, but uh, I think it still remains 15, what, 10 after three, something like that. All right, well, good luck, Coach. Coach Davis, he likes our chances. You know what, I, I, we do too, so. Feeling good about the potential outcome here. All right, we got the one from the Dragons. All right, top of the order. Bobcats about to see the first pitch. We got Noah up, number two, shortstop. Shows bunt. That's a foul ball. His dad didn't like that one. He looked, he watched it, which. Um, and for those you kind of watch it dribble down the line, like it was going to go fair but foul, but yep. it's where you just, as a runner, as a hitter, you got to go. You got to go. Right. No hesitation, just got to go. There he goes. Now grab it, now grab it. Shows butt, he takes He's off, foul ball. So I think Skipper yelling at him may have done something. Now, Jimmy, I think, I don't think even the first game we saw, we saw a number of bunting attempts, but we did not see one laid down to fair play. No, not even one, right? Not even one. Which is remarkable for this team, which is really known as a bunning team. Bunning speed, uh, a lot of tenacity on the bases. This pitcher for the Dragons is very interesting. And there's a hit right to third baseman. He's got a really wild delivery. His arm's kind of flailing. As if you would be when I attacked you to beat you up. You think I would flail like that? And run and scream. I might run and scream. I don't know that I would flail. No, you'd flail. And there's a bump put into play. And here's the speed. Throw to first. And it is not in time. That would be Cooper laying down a nice bunt. So we got one, one man on, one out. And we got Hawk. Big number one is up. Big number one, big hitter. 
He took one deep left center last game. Went to the fence. Yes, he did. Game. That was a pick move to first, but uh, not in time to get the runner. You know, Jimmy, in those situations, uh, the idea is to keep the runner close, not always to get the runner out on the pick move. You just want to let that runner know that you're thinking of him from the mound. And there's a little chopper to middle infield. Should be played. It's overthrown, and that's going to advance both runners. Now to third and second base on an error. Did you see that? He hit the ball at the end of the bat, and the, and the spin just, when the ball hit the uh, ground, it just took off a different direction. That threw, that threw the second baseman off. It was interesting. So now we got runners in second and third, yeah. one out. We got Big Brody up. We got a meeting between the umps. I think it was a collision there between the runner and the second baseman. I think they're saying that Interference was Cooper in the second baseman. The second baseman couldn't feel the ball. Correct. See what the blue says. Safe, safe. Yeah. So we gotta we gotta give some props to home plate umpire Joe. We've known him for many, many years. He's very consistent in the strike zone and everything he all decisions on the field, very respectable in the area. You know, he's really known to have a consistent strike zone and just pumping consistency for a while. It's that, that veteran yeah. uh, experience really, really shows when he's out there behind the plate. And it's very much appreciated, and especially at close games, competitive games. Another big bat here in Brody. And oh. It's out in front of that one. Ooh. Like he's chopping wood. wood. Chopping wood on that one. But he wants to get those runs across the plate. He's got two in scoring position, and he's got the bat to do it. And he waits on that pitch and does deliver. Ooh. He's safe. Gets behind the tag. That could have been dangerous. That could have been dangerous. And Micah Cotton of Pickles coming home, and he's safe as well. It's an overthrow at second. And we've seen already three errors by the Dragons in just the first inning of play, Jimmy. So did you see that? Coach Duke sent Hawk. He was halfway down third base to home. Taunted the infield of the throw home. He did wild, a wild throw to home. Then Brody was on first, took it halfway to second, taunted him, that fielder, over through second as well, so. Well, you know, from a classic baseball standpoint, right, you've got a guy in third, you want to get him home, and a smart base runner going to first will try and get yep. himself in a pickle between first and second. That allows enough time for the runner at third to get home. Yep, yep. Very heads-up baseball by the Bobcats there to make the score 2 nothing, And another runner score position, and a beautiful laid down ball that does just go foul. It hit the, it hit the grass. <laughs> And then took off from the foul territory. So, I have workout pants on. Okay. And they have, it's not that I work out. I have them, the ankles unzipped, and I have them pulled up to my knees. I will know for the viewers that up top you are a lobster, and down below those legs you are snow white. Snow white. Yeah, I like quite that. A contrast. Snow white. Yeah. All I just need is blue, red, white, and blue. Just need to talk to animals, you know, the morning, the morning birds. Oh my gosh! Which you probably do, don't you? Probably go out back in the morning and, and whistle to the birds and get a high foul to the back. Whistle for the birds? I don't think so. So I'm trying to get some color to my calves. Yeah, well, you need it because it's that's pretty awful. Okay. That's pretty. Wow. You don't have to be. Even, I can't even look at that. You don't have to be so rude. I mean, he shot to second base. Fielded runner is out. And it scores another run to make it three nothing. Bobcats here in the bottom of the first inning. So what we're seeing is really classic Bobcats coming out early, yep. coming out aggressive, aggressive yep. base running, smart base running, not just aggressive but smart base running. Did you say smart base running? Smart base running. Okay. You said it like 12 times. Just wondering if you meant smart base running. Yeah. 
So I learned today that your middle name, the first letter of your name starts with an O. So it's interesting. That's right. Oliver. Um, do you know my middle name? I do. Very interesting. Your middle name is Octavius. A hard shot to third. That's a great shot. Under the third baseman's glove. That would be Cannon. He's our, he's our backstop today. And Jimmy, we probably should remind our viewers at home that this is not a tournament, but actually Tiba baseball, which is uh, a different flavor of, of baseball in the area, usually meant for development, getting uh, kids reps and positions they're not used to playing. You know what Tiba stands for? Forgive us as we get Jimmy connected again to the Nevo service. Thank think, you, Chris. I think we're here. Thank Chris, for getting us back here. on track. And he's back on. So do you know what TEBA stands for? It's the Texas Educational Baseball Association. Negative. <laughs> Actually, I think I it's Texas Exceptional the, Baseball Association. Is it exceptional? I think. I think. Or elite. Texas Elite Baseball Association. I think, I think it's elite. The Kina Es Bonita Association. Stop. All right, that's, Just stop. That is, yeah. Don't do that. Man. Now is, how does 2 to Connor? Connor's up number nine. So the Bob Gifford's were in the blue tops, white bottoms. Connor facing his counterpart on the mound. Connor came out and shut down the Dragons in four batters, I believe. Which was a pretty efficient outing for Connor. Very impressive. He's given the swing, the swing away sign, so. I'm assuming one comes on a pipe, he's swinging. Ball four. And that'll walk Connor. Great at bat. So we got two outs. Runner on first and second. We got Big Austin up. Number eight. We got our pinch runner for Connor because he is the pitcher. Which bring in number two, Noah Duke. And we should uh, note that in Tiba baseball, there is a five run per inning run rule. And with the Bobcats now with three on the scoreboard, if they get these two runners in square position across the plate, it will end the inning and the Dragons will be back to the, to the bats. This pitching is just, man, it's like a wild thing. And he does. It's a pass ball. It's going to score Gage. No advances the third and second. Four nothing Bobcats in the bottom of the first. We got number 23, Carson Gabbard, on, on deck. Looks like Coach changed up the batting order a little bit. He did. So our usual leadoff batter, Jaden Lawrence, number seven, has been moved in the order. Um, Give some kids a different look in the order. And it's a good thing to do in the baseball. I like that. I, I like the old switcheroo. You know, especially as we go into some uh, tournaments in the coming weeks. We've got Rocker B Ranch. Yeah, that's a fantastic a ballpark. A fantastic ballpark. Beautiful ranch, beautiful baseball ranch. Can't wait to broadcast in there. It's spectacular. You know there. what? That would be cool. Yeah. We need to have some. We need to talk to Mr. Producer about that and possibly get some uh, some video, maybe some pictures of the ranch. Yeah. And kind of maybe display pregame or something like that. You know. Because, I mean, just to be able to get the, the view of what the actual ranch looks like. Yeah. The, if uh, in between in innings here, uh, I encourage anyone at home to look up Rocker B Ranch, Texas. Um, Rocker is in the musician type. Rocker B is in Bravo Ranch. And you'll see that facility is fantastic for kids and families. There, You can stay up. The cabins, 
Got a couple fields there with beautiful views. Uh, past center field. This seems to go forever in that big Texas sky. And uh, just a joy to play there. We we played there a few seasons ago. We stayed in the locker rooms with the boys. We did. Um, they're building a high school field out there. I didn't know that. Yep. Hmm. Yep. It's about an hour and a half drive from Flyer Mound. I think so. A little over an hour, yeah. Get out of town a little bit and play some ranch. It's out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. That's where I branded you with uh, your nickname, Lil Pico. Do you, you remember sure? how you got that name? I don't remember how. I remember you just kind of yapping for no reason. And you just made up a stupid name. Can you well, remind us and remind me and then also the viewers? Yeah. I, the so six viewers we have. We were having breakfast burritos in the Rocker Bee cafeteria. And one of the servers came over and, and asked, Hey, do you guys want some Lil Pico? Little, little Pico? Yeah. Little Pico the guy with the burrito. And I said, Oh my gosh, that's your name Because you wanted some. It's a Pico. You Pico. wanted a little Pico. So now it's Jimmy Lil Pico Gabbard. Thank you. Lil Pico. I don't know why you guys say Lil, but I I kind of have an idea what, what you mean by that. First pitch is a soft dribbler to shortstop and should be an easy out of first. And one quick out here in the top of the second inning. Hey, I think Score we have four some, nothing uh, Bobcats. I think we have a few position changes. Carson and left. From first, we got Duke center from short. And Jaden playing his old position on the Rattlers, uh, first, first base. First base. We got Coop at second. And it looks like Gager's at third where he started. So I really hope uh, folks do tune in for that Rocker B tournament, Jamie, because they won't, There's a shot they won't to center. regret it. Well played ball in center. He kind of uh, misplayed that one a little bit. Had to come in and die for it, so nice glove. For the win that we have, tailing out tailing left out. field, left center field, uh, that ball did not carry as much as I thought it would. And uh, he had to make that play by a, a slight dive. A slight dive. A nice and pitch on the outside corner. Subtle lunge forward. If I may. So. There's. Another nice pitch. That was a nice little off speed pitch. I would strike you out on one pitch. <laughs> uh, would be impressive because it's uh, impossible. Ooh, wow. That's an overthrow to first. And he might make this throw. Oh, he's going to hold it. Oh, he is going to throw it back to the pitcher. Smart move there. Is that an overthrow? I didn't see that. That was a 15-foot overthrow. Okay. Yes. Player not setting his feet. It happens. Kids want to make the play and just don't get those feet set. It's all about the footwork, right? That's right. And that leg work. And by the way, your legs are very white and just really, really gross. It's not gross. Uh, I'm Caucasian. Yeah, From my waist down. That's obvious. From my waist down. You're half lobster and half Caucasian. <laughs> There's the pitch. That swing would be miss. a swing and a miss. So, <clears throat> I report to the COO at work, right? The coup, as it were. The coup. Yeah, well. He's not really, a, I mean, he's the person, okay? Um, you should, from Waxahachie, or they say Waxahachie, I don't they know do why. They say Waxahachie, it's the weirdest thing I've ever it's heard. It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. It's really dumb. It's really, <laughs> thank you. At least somebody <laughs> agrees with me. So he's listening now, and okay. so around Christmas time, we have, like, good sized bonuses come out, right? Okay. And company's so, doing well. Yeah, company's doing well. Concrete business, right? And so he has... That's good. He says he has a big part in my bonus. I don't think he does, but every year he goes, who's your daddy? Okay. Yeah. So, and then, of course, I have to say, 
Thank you, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and he's laughing right now. Anytime I want, because he always says, you're going to want something. So I've got to say, Daddy. I really don't like it, but if it makes him feel better. Job, it's probably a good idea. If it makes him feel better, fine. You probably tell him whatever he wants to hear, don't you? Yep. <laughs> yep. There's a bloop over second base and a throw to home way off line. Way off line. No, and that will score. The second. There's a lead runner. That Espinosa was waiting for. You know, do you know what you call profitability in a concrete company? What's that? Hard margins. That's so stupid. <laughs> so dumb. I mean, because yeah, concrete hard, hard margins. Uh, yeah. I I bet your COO really appreciates that. He probably went, oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, it's true. Hard margins. So his name is, his name is Noel. N O E L. Okay, so you're okay. So people that first meet him, they probably call him Noel. That's usually the mistake people make. You're, you're pretty good. And the no Noels of the world are quick to correct. It's actually, it's Noel. Very quick because yeah. they don't like Noel. No. Okay. So I asked him. I don't remember when I asked him. There's a foul tip back. At one at one point, I asked him, "Hey, what happened to the Christmas alphabet?" <laughs> He's like, "What?" <laughs> of course, I said. There's no L. <laughs> I find that uh, very amusing. Bobcats retire the side <laughs> as we make cruel Christmas jokes about uh, Judy's COO. Uh, Scores four to one here as we go into the top of the third. Uh, yeah, Excuse yeah, me, yeah. bottom of the second inning. Bottom Bobcats of the second. Come back to bad. And, uh, you know, they've got a healthy lead now. And, uh, healthy 4-1 is not very healthy. It's Well, in a good defensive game, it's a very healthy lead, right? That's true. It so is a, It is a good lead. But you going back to my manager, um, he is a good guy. Good good old, just a good old Texas boy. He's a good person. So. Well, and he's watching. I, you know, that means a lot to the team. And, mm -hmm. yep. You know, it's, it's a big deal. These boys are uh, getting some, some viewers on, on the YouTube. Yep. He's very supportive of me and my role at the company, and you know, he's been a huge uh, um, advocate for me. But also, just give me some really good direction in my job. Also, just not just my job, but in just in life experiences. So, it's a good person to go to for oh, your uh, severe brown nosing is duly noted. Well, I, I, but it's you, Christmas it's is subtle, coming up. But yeah. Not so much. It's subtle. I don't think it's very subtle. No, you're really laying it on. It's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. That's what she said. She has to have said that. She should not have said that. This is a PG, right? PG-13. That comment's PG-13. I think it's impossible to get that rating with you. <laughs> I'm not appreciating crew. For the announcing crew. That's okay. Gonna be, we're lucky to make PG-13. Yeah. Okay, so we have a pitching change. We got a lefty in. Number 44. He's got a completely different delivery. That's what she said. Awkward silence. Uh, I'm watching. I'm watching the picture, and I imagine that the viewers at home are as well. And you will see, as you as you noted aptly, that it is a radically different delivery. It's a little more straight line, but he's really more throwing than pitching. You're getting a lot of upper body, not a lot of You're quick loud. hit right. movement into a fast. Yes, sir. Pitch. What are you doing? You're right. All right, come on, Carson. You gotta hey. crank that ball, buddy. That's our pitcher, man. Come on. Don't suck. Yeah, don't suck. Now we got uh, <clears throat> Mr. Carson Gabbard leading off the inning lefty against lefty matchup. We'll see. See what does here. Carson normally has tends to have an issue with slower pitchers. He's a fastball hitter. So we'll see if he can wait back and drive the pitch. To your point, I've always appreciated how fast Carson can get to the ball. I like the fact he likes to hit those fastballs because obviously connection on the fastball is going to be a harder hit, generally speaking. Right. He does have quick hands. He can get to it quick. Lays down a bunt. 
And that does stay that fair. Is a fair Just ball. fair. That was a sick, wow, sick bunt. I'm not sure if our viewers can see it, but the, oh my that gosh. ball was fouled fair and just started to roll foul. Catcher was hoping it would roll it fair. Died. It died. Jimmy, but it stayed right on the line. Died on the on the vine, as they say. That's where I am. I'm right on the line. Yeah. I stay on the line. You cross a lot of lines. I'm not sure if you're much of a line guy. My humble opinion. There goes Carson. Ooh. And he's going to get down. He'll get under the tag. Speed wow. Pulls. Speed. Kill. So that was a... Pickoff attempt at first, and Carson took off stealing, and they tried getting him, and no go. He's safe at second. And now we have a runner in scoring position to hopefully make this game 5-1, uh, potentially. Fake bunt down, actually gets into third standing. So two pitches, he's already on third base. Speed kills. We got Pierce up. This is a powerful little hitter right here. There's a shot to third. And that's going to be a base hit and an RBI. It's not a base hit. It's an error on third. It's an error. That's correct. It is a fielding error on third base. So it's not technically to be scored a hit, but it will likely be scored as a hit. It's a hard play to. It's a hard uh, play to handle because it was a shot to third. And that third base was playing kind of shallow. It's another pickoff play to first. We get Mr. Jaden Lawrence up, lefty against lefty. See if he does some magic here. Jaden trying a new spot in the order for this game as the yep. skipper mixes it up. It's another pickoff play at first. And he's got to get down. He does get under the tag. Jimmy, I'm a little wow. shocked the Dragons are Making more of these plays with these runners. I can. Just not showing a lot of effort in, in making these plays. You know what I've noticed that first baseman? His transition from the glove to the hand, the throwing hand, is really slow. That could be a big difference in bang, bang, play at second. You know what I'm what, saying? What, yeah, absolutely. One out count here is uh, Jaden Lawrence sits back into the box, shows a couple of swings, and stares down the pitcher. Hopefully waiting to eat his lunch. That's going to be trouble. And that is a hit. That will be an error as well. It Hit the left fielder's glove. glove. And it will be scored officially as an error. It was a catchable ball on this plate. So I like, I like the contact because that's what we've been looking for, right? <clears throat> Absolutely. No, that was that was a good uh, good motivator for Jaden. You know, we've seen him as a leadoff batter in hitting slumps before in, in seasons past. Yep. When he puts a couple down, his confidence is regained, and he starts to really show the muscle on the bat. So that yep. was a good thing to see for, for Jaden. There's the pitch, and it is another well-played... And the uh, up calls it foul. That was a good call. I didn't see it. Good call, Blue. That was a lay down by Noah Duke. Lefty. Just goes foul. Did you, so did you see Pierce have to, have to leap over the catcher? Because the play was right in the middle of the base path. And he did not make it. He did not make the leap. It was a very good attempt. At the end of the day, if you're going to get tagged, what do you need to do? Make sure that ball falls out of that glove. I would just plow the person over. Of course you would. Of course you would. Why not? It's the right thing to do. Of course, the kid wasn't, the catcher was not in the base path. He could have, you know, just got a ball big out too. of that glove. What are you doing, man? Another ball. Oh, nice. Well, are you? Sweet. Hey, hey, up. come here. Remember, if he calls the, the curveball, you split. Okay, otherwise, stay long. Don't short him. Stay long. All right? Finish. You got it, Carson. Good to see Carson get some reps out there. Too. Yeah, I like that. I like that. 
Hard shot over the second baseman's glove. Advances one, two runners nice. home to make this score seven to one by my count. Speed kills. <clears throat> a nice hard shot, not an error, right over the second baseman's glove, number five out there for the Dragons. Cooper Waldrop steps up to the plate, number 28. Righty. Righty on lefty. And these Bobcats are just waiting for these pitches, these slower pitches to be delivered, waiting back. But we're seeing some success on driving these pitches out. There is a decent wing to, got me. to left field. You can see the flag out beyond uh, left center field there. About 15 miles an hour. Another successful pick to get the run of the pick on. He will be safe at second with an overthrow. Mishandled ball by the first baseman of the Dragons will advance that runner. Chris, you got me? Chris, you got me? That was an interesting play right there. So, Jimmy, I think on Rocker B, or maybe tomorrow, tomorrow we need to get Chris in on the mic to announce with us. Yes. He's good at analysis, knows baseball, has done it before, and I think it'd be fun to get him in on the mic with us uh, maybe tomorrow. What do you think? I think it's a fantastic idea. He's up for it. If he's up for it. Good. I think he's up for it. Unless, he, unless, he's, a, unless he's a pansy. Well, you know. Yeah, I'm waiting. You said you know, so I'm waiting for the answer. Well, do you know that to call someone a pansy, technically in botanical terms, is a compliment? Do you know why? Uh, oh, my gosh. The pansy flower is very robust and strong, blah, blah, blah. Did you say robust? I did. Did I give you a fist pound, buddy? No, fist don't touch pound? me. Don't, ever, don't touch me. You just said robust. I did. You just showed the... Robustness of your vocabulary. I know. Well, like I've always said, English was my goodest subject. <laughs> What's so funny about that comment? I don't get it. Just, I love that. That's another good shot. Left center field. Center fielder plays the ball, but not before scoring. Another right for the Bobcats to make this score eight to one. So we got a big bat up. And big Hawkins. Nolan Hawkins. Number, Number one, one. Nolan Hawkins. You know, Nolan can very easily place one over the fence, especially with the wind tailing out the left center, Jimmy. Really, he gets nice. a hold of that ball, it's gone. Be nice for him to hit that scoreboard. And he does hit the left side of the field. That's trouble. There was a chance for the left uh, left side of the defense to catch that ball, but they kind of gave up on it. I don't, that's, I don't get that. It's a lack of effort right there. We got Brody in on deck. We got Coop at first. No outs. Score is eight to one. Got one strike on Nolan. Got a steal. Another throw to second. He needs to stay. They cannot. So this okay, so the viewers can't see this. We got a left handed pitcher. Pick off play to first. The runners go. That should be an out every time. But the speed of this team is just incredible. It you is. just cannot seem to get these people out. That's you, incredible. You really can't even, in my opinion, Jimmy, blame the Dragons. They're making good pick moves. They're getting the runner off the bag. You just can't. Speed kills. Speed kills. You know, head down, run to the base, and uh, get out of that tag. We've seen it four or five times already. Yep. And I will say, too, that the bats of the Bobcats are much better in this game than in the first. Even if the Bobcats won the first game, the oh. bats really are better in this game. And there's another shot. From, that's going to go to the fence. That scores a run. That will be... No one looks gets a triple to out of right it. first, maybe round second. He will stay safe at second base for a double, a stand-up double, RBI double at that. And that run rule, that does bring the fifth run across and will end the inning to take us into the top of the third. Yep. Score of 9-1 Bobcats. So what do we think the reason? That, let me give you my analysis of the bats. Second game versus first game. So the first game is just, so you have pitchers that, the velocity is everything, right? Slow pitchers, it comes in like a meatball, you want to just kind of destroy it. So a hitter's like, the ball looks huge. 
So then what happens is you want to try and kill the ball. You lose all mechanics, all form, pop up or ground out. The boys are waiting back, and they're having controlled swings. That's why you can just hear the bat, the crack of the bat. <clears throat> it's a lot different in this game. They're waiting back, and they're driving the ball, driving that back side so they're getting power in it. So, You know, we often say, Jimmy, that the ideal at-bat to have success is – and it sounds counterintuitive, but it's late and fast. You want to yep. swing as late as possible yep. and quick to the ball. And so, you know, to see these boys, as you said, wait back and drive on those slower pitches, they're going to have success nine out of ten times. Now Carson Gabber, number 23, is on the mound. Let's see what he can do. So him and I worked this week. We worked... I think it was Wednesday night. He threw, he threw 60. He worked on, you know, the two seamers, four seamers. Mm -hmm. Change the cutter and his curveball. So, just telling him when he throws that curveball, it's split the body instead of, because, you know, arm location is everything. You know, the, the arm slot. Where you release and all that, so he, you know, how, you know him. He has a tendency to come across, right, and then come to he the right long. side. He yeah. gets long. Yeah, you know, um, you see a lot of teaching these days of getting to the to the C shape in the arm, into the C, you know, sooner versus going real long. Yep. Um, but really, Carson's come along in his pitching in the last year, and it's fun to see him on the mound, and getting getting some reps in in this game against the Dragons. There it is. He's mine, Joe. He wants a balk. He wants a balk. Oh, no, lefty. Oh. Listen, Tim can't can't call for the balk unless I just know for sure he's coming at front foot all the way. You know, that's a forty-five. That's right. Well, he he did balk us. That's my point. You know, we're doing three man mechanics or four man mechanics. That's different. Yeah. You got the best view, and your and your first base coach too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right well, as long sure. as it's getting to that angle, I mean, it's hard to see it. Jimmy and I were just talking to head umpire out here, Joe. We mentioned him earlier. He's a seasoned guy. He's uh, done, I mean, hundreds, I mean, thousands probably oh, yeah. years in his career in the North Texas area. And is now, I think, officiating, or upping rather, in the uh, in Southlake. Pretty yep. much primarily, I think, is what he's yep. called. So, I like seeing him behind the plate. Consistent strike zone. Oh, when you see when you show, when you you show see Joe behind the plate, you, you know you're going to get a a great called game. That's right. And there's not a lot of coaches that, that challenge him. No. They know he's seasoned. You know, and I would just add on to that, Jimmy, that we don't often talk about umping, but the reality is umpires, they want their job to be easy. The catcher's job is to make it easy for the umpire to call strikes, right? Swing and a miss. It's a great first pitch by Gabbard out there on the bump. To make it 0-1. 9-1 is the score. Your Bobcats lead the draft 9-1 top of the third inning and there is a golfing hack to make it 0-2 on lift number 10 of the dragons i i missed the pitch what was the pitch do you know it was an inside it tailed it tailed he's gonna throw a curveball here that's it oh my gosh did you see that that was delicious <laughs> that was fantastic a tasty off speed, a lot of movement, and let number 10 couldn't resist that little sample on the Costco tray. Can you say, don't give me any lip? <laughs> I bet his name is Lippy. Lippy. Lip number 10. Lip. What do you think his first name is? Um, it's a good first name for a kid with the last name Lip. Smooth? Smooth Lip? Yeah. <laughs> And there's a golfing hack, and he's probably going to get on base. That, that ball came all the way to the backstop and the south lake. There is quite a bit of real estate between home plate and the backstop, making it a little bit more difficult for catchers to get to the ball. So you realize that is a strikeout with the guys on first. Correct. That's interesting in baseball. Only in baseball. It is a K. Takes a look over first to Jaden. His former Rattler teammate, now Bobcat teammate. 
and probably a good time to mention that in tomorrow's double header, we'll be in Trophy Club against Carson Gabbard and Jay Lawrence's former team. Yep. Well, at least four members of the former team. Yes. And they so look three. forward to the matchup. Three or four. Four. Really? There are four players. Yeah, we got Parker, Briggs, Vance, and Enzo. And Enzo, another right. former teammate. It'll be a reunion of sorts, but uh, no love lost as they will try to defeat each other. All competitive kids. Skipper calls time with their talk to his pitcher. So what do you think this one's about? I think it's a stamina visit. A calming, say, hey, Slowing relax, down. relax, slow things down. Carson, you know, can tend to kind he's of speed. He's speed. rush up, speed up a little bit and, and rush things. So I think that's a good visit necessary. Probably a great time for it. Carson's doing fine. He's shown some great pitches. And the offense has given him quite quite a lead. To work with, right? In the yeah. so. Good time for these boys to work these things out on the mound. Stay so, long. So he's coming inside to a right handed hitter, right? So he's got to make that adjustment. He has a tendency to do that. Now I'm watching his delivery and where his his lead foot is ending. So watch that lead foot on the delivery. Okay, it's a good move. It's a good move. Now there is Jimmy, obviously a little bit of uh, nervousness. Maybe Stay long. The first or the runner on third because he missed that ball. That is going to score a run. The bunt attempt foul. However, Carson uh, is well aware that Jaden used to play first base on the old Rattler team about 50% of the time. He's a trusty first baseman and, and usually gets those, those pickoff throws into his glove. Here's the pitch. That was a ball? I thought it was a strike. Look like a strike to me. 1-1. One, one. But we're upping from a better as well and off the plate. from three feet away, so and there's a high hit ball to second base, no damage done. Runner stays at third. And Carson is uh, getting the outs that are needed. Got a big bat up here, number eight Mitchell. Big righty. And that's a dead ball, hit by pitch. Number eight will take his base, and that will load the bases up, Jimmy. We're big number two here. Okay, so he's got to make that adjustment. He's coming inside to a right-handed hitter. Stay long, stay long. And a left-handed hitter, lefty on lefty. Lefty on lefty. Bases juiced. There you go. Shakes off that sign. For another strike on the outside corner. Well delivered pitch there. To make it go into the very quick one. Right out. For a nice one box that there's off like you guess the What's he gonna bring here? He's going outside. That should have been blocked. Uh, we're gonna eat that and no play at home. Again with the space between Home plate and the uh, backstop, there's just no play there unless it bounces perfectly off of the concrete just below the fence. It's just not going to, uh, that play's not going to be made most of the time. It's too far for the catcher to go. Yep. A lot of real estate. All right, counts one, two. And wind becoming less of a factor as we notice the flag out in left center. It's uh, calming down a bit. And there oh, did you see that? Nasty nasty uh, wow. cuts away from that wow. batter uh, well delivered 
Maddie almost got dinged by a foul almost ball out of play. She survived it, no worse for the wear. Stay long, baby, stay long. Yeah. Hey, you're good. Don't worry about it. You're good, man. Just pitch. You're good. Might, might be scored a wild pitch. I don't think it's a fast ball, but I think it's a wild pitch there. I would agree with you. <clears throat> but again, good lead. Nine to three Bobcats. No harm, no foul, as we say. And uh, a high hack by number two. Let's get lucky there. You got no left yet. Got two outs, man on third. Stay long, finish. Stay loose, Carson. Nice and easy, kid. So we have another pass ball and another. So what was that? What pitch was that? I missed on, that. Uh, on uh, an error. So all three of those runners, I think, ran on either a wild pitch or a pass ball, Jimmy. Yep. What was that last pitch? I didn't see the delivery, honestly. Outside, ball one on the new batter with uh, bases empty. Plays at one, and the Bobcats still lead nine to four. Great pitch. It is going to fall fair. They put it second base for a stand up double to keep the Dragons' hopes alive of eventually taking the lead over the Bobcats. That's just, to pitcher, just that's demoralizing. You know? It is. You know, every time you step on that rubber, it's the reset button, right? You gotta yep. get it out of your head and, and uh, keep pitching. Stay long, finish! But Jimmy, as you and I discussed before the game, it's good to see these kids getting reps and working through the challenging times. Right? Oh, yeah. Because baseball is hard. Baseball is a hard game. It'll kill you mentally. There's a high infield fly to retire the side. And the Bobcats will come to the bats with a score of 94, bottom of the third. Well, middle of the third. Got Coach Dave pulling Carson to the side, talking to him. It's all mental. That's right. Smack on the booty. Good job, Smack, I guess. He did well. Not a fan of the pass balls and, you know. Yeah, you know, one wild pitch, but overall he was in the zone. He still had some good movement. You know, that's what you want to see from your pitchers, right? And uh, again, I will reiterate, it's a beautiful day in South Lake, my friend. Legs. Yeah, that is just awful. It's not awful. It could be better. It's not awful. Do you, uh... Do you shave your I legs? Shave. You do shave, okay. Shave my entire body. Let's just here, do you have a little, little nick on your knee there? Did you? Surgery. Did you use a... Uh, Surgery. Did, so do you use feminine razors to get the job done? Feminine, no. Why would I use feminine razors? Well, I, I don't, you know. I don't look feminine. No, uh, but, you know, you're shaving your legs. I thought you might use like a you know, Nair product or something. Negative. Nair for short shorts. Remember that commercial uh, campaign back in the Nair for short shorts? For short shorts, huh? Wonder what they meant by that. Well, I mean, you don't have to elaborate. I can, I can kind of. I know you like to wear those uh, country Daisy Dukes with the frayed bottoms. I do. Yeah, you like to show a little skin down there, you know? No, I don't. 
Well, I mean, it's well shaven. Your legs? Yeah. Yes. They are well shaven. My entire body's well shaven. Yeah, that is... This goes back to bodybuilding days. I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. That is, uh, that's repulsive. No, it's... It, I consider it being very clean. Okay. Yeah. You are so we well, lost some viewers. Well that comment. We're down to three viewers from five. Balding, coming down. Well, I think that's your fault. That's the way it goes. Jimmy, the, the reality is we will broadcast for even one viewer. I will broadcast for no viewers. We care that much. Yes. I don't even care if there's baseball going on. We can still We're broadcast. just talk. Yeah. Sit on the front porch, talk about, you know, politics and fa faith. Yep. And then shaving of the... Talks in Jesus. Of the body. Yeah, you know. I had to comment. You know, your hair has been atrocious for the last five years. Thank you. Um, you got the nickname Rooster. Because you had the front part of your hair looking like a rooster. And... You finally shaved it off. I'll have to admit, you sort of a sexy man now. Well, I'll take sort of sexy. Because sort of sexy is better than, you know, not sexy at all. So does your wife like you now? She'll talk to me for more than a few minutes. Oh, good. That dinner. Ooh, that's a shot by that's Brody. That's a great shot by Brody Jackson. Right it does center. fall fair. Center footer misses it. And he will advance to two standing up easily. That was a shot. He Easy. went down in the dirt to get that one. He got a little dirty on that one. That was just a well struck ball. You could hear it off the bat. You know it's going to hit the good part of the bat. And tell you what, if we had that win we, we had 30 minutes ago, that, that might have had a shot. I'm sweating in places that I really not say. Yeah. <laughs> And that drop ball, ball will advance the runner to third. Brody gets to third. One runner on. No outs here in the uh, bottom of the third. There's a high ball. I thought we would have like a hundred viewers today. We have three. Impressed with that, Mr. Well, Producer. you know, I think that, you know, folks know it's not a tournament ball, but it's still baseball. It's still baseball. And, uh, it's like spring season baseball. Always good to watch the youngsters get out here and, you know, get off the, get off the Xboxes and Playstations and come out and play some team sports yes, on a beautiful sir. day. That's what it's all about. Yes, Count is two balls, two strikes to Gager. And that was just a very lazy lob. It's like a pitcher. softball pitch. Not sure what he was trying to do there. No one's going to get fooled on that pitch. If you're not throwing gas to begin with, you can't throw a lobber. That's going to walk the runner, and that's going to score another run on that pass ball. Bring the score to 10-4 to 4 Bobcats in the bottom of the, of the third. Got Cannon come and take it. Espinoza, the righty. He's our catcher for game two as well. So, Jimmy, I did get some new golf clubs yesterday. It's a pick move, missed by first, overthrown, and that's going to advance runner. Maybe not one, but two bases. He's going to go for it. He's heading for third, and he will be up. Almost surprised the skipper didn't send him home that was a rainbow throw from out of play to the catcher to the pitcher and and jim we've seen that from both teams today just yeah. having a hard time getting that ball to first base yeah. and that's a hard hit ball that's going to drop fair just misses the glove of the center fielder scoring another run the 11th run for the bobcats and a stand-up double by cannon 
of the Bobcats, who's now at second base with a score of 11 for the Bobcats. Have a very comfortable lead and a rather dejected home fan base, wouldn't you say? Yes, sir. We have Connor up. Here's a little shot that to blue, shortstop. That Ooh. again off the escapes the glove. Love the shortstop for an error. Now we got runners on first and second, no outs. We got Austin up, and the ball back to the pitcher to try it all over again, Jimmy. You know, it's a great life lesson in, in pitching and baseball. Every time you get your foot in that rubber, come set, it's a it's a reset button, as I've always told pitchers. It's no matter what's happened on the field, you hit that reset button. Yep. You start over again, just like the new day, right? If you think about that last play, it's gonna kill you in baseball. You gotta learn from it, and move on. So the pitcher, I like to see the pitcher concerned about the runner, but he's not fo focusing on the pitch. He's, his eyes are glued on that runner too long, and he's not coming in and getting fixed on delivering that pitch. Watch it again. Nope. 3-0. So i got a comment on my 17-year-old daughter, Jaslyn. Jazz, yeah, she's watching, huh? She's headed to. That's a nice shot. Meet. That's gonna score another run, maybe. Yep, that is. Skipper's gonna hold him at third, and part of that, Jimmy, might be mercy. Yes. Just it's not a, a mercy. being classless, right? Just mercy. And that's classy baseball, right there. You were saying about Jazz. We have 23. Carson Gabbard up. He needs to stay. Stepping in the box. But yes, Jazz ran last night at 200. She qualified for districts today. So she's going to run this afternoon uh, in the in the 200 individual event. And they have the 4x1 as a team and 4x2 as a team. So she runs for Marcus High School in Flower Mound. One of the best high schools in the country, yeah. especially for athletics. Yeah. It really is probably top five, honestly. Yeah. We've really been working on her, her nutrition, you know, fueling the body. Um, what are runners eating these days to stay fueled up? Well, you would think a lot of carbs. Carb load typically before a race, that kind of thing, right? Yeah, but they're not really carb loading because a lot of that depend because a lot of kids don't know what a good carb is. Like they got just eat pasta, mm -hmm. bread, whatever, and it just sits on you. Like starchy carbs yeah, versus you know. It's another hit. And Ooh. that takes a nasty bounce past the shortstop. And bases are loaded now. Bases are loaded. So one one of her so my my morning meals, I do nine day white. Two yolks and a half a cup of oatmeal. And the oatmeal is carbs. So she's been doing the eggs, two to three eggs, one yolk, and she'll do oatmeal with the carb source. So that's kind of her pre game, pre morning um, meal prep. And then fruit, we, we do a lot of fruit as a family for our, our carb source. Okay. Um, so we'll hopefully she'll have a good day today. Well, Jazz, we like, wish you were, she's watching, you said? I don't know. Well, uh, that is a well-struck ball to left. That's right now, the, the Bobcats are just really putting on a hitting clinic. That will not clear the bases. The skipper's holding everybody up. And that's classy thing. baseball. Yeah. You know, folks might be thinking, why are you holding the runners up? Well, when you're up 13, 12, 4, 14, 4, it's just uh, you want to put some mercy on the opposing team and that's just that's just playing classy baseball right. the lesser manager would have uh, would have scored those runs look at that bird flying over right field there oh wow that is beautiful absolutely stunning huge wow. huge uh, that's a, a, a swan it is a squirrel bird okay right. have you ever heard of a squirrel bird I have not well now you, now you know I think you're lying. Lying? Squirrel bird? I just gave you some mis misinformation. Okay, all right. 
Looks like 23 is back in the bump. Cars, long and finish. Oh, never mind. Not a first time. <laughs> <laughs> so Carson, who pitched in the last inning, will now move to first base. Got a cannon on the bump. Pierce is going to be at short, looks like. Where's Jaden going? I'm assuming out to center field. The long trot out to center. <coughs> and Connor will move to left field. Brody Jackson will play third. Hawk is likely to play right. Negative. Cooper's in right. No. Yeah. Yep. Looks like uh, Nolan's Hawk will at play short, uh, second. Second. I'm not gonna lie, Jimmy. I'm a little hungry. I'm always hungry. Yeah. Yes, you are. I am always hungry. I eat six to, I eat six to seven times a day. That to me seems a, a bit over the top. But those aren't full meals. I mean, you're right. I mean, that would because that would be that would be too much. That would be the majority of borderline them are. disgusting. So the you're, you're are. probably a snacker, right? Kind of snack throughout the day. I do not snack. You eat six full meals. I never snack. Well, what about your tub of meat? Is that considered a meal? Oh yeah. That little bucket of meat you bring. So that is a pound of meat. I will eat that. Oh my gosh. Meat being, you know, turkey, chicken, maybe some buffalo, but I will eat a pound of meat. Not every day. At least a half a pound a day. So you would know, is it true? Does Arby have the meats? No. Arby's does not have the meats. You know, we don't we don't eat out a lot of fast food, but a lot of what we eat is organic. So I would assume that Arby's is kind That's of fake just no meat. fun. You have no fun. Negative. Oh, hello. She tripped on that pitch. So Cannon got tripped up there on the mound, but still almost delivered the pitch. That would be a highly athletic move. It would be. Unlike you. You would have tripped and fallen. I crying. might have cried. No, you would have cried. It was a swing and a miss. The hitter wasn't ready for that pitch. That was a late, late, late swing. Looks like we got a 2 2 count. We got Mr. Producer's dog, Stella, running around the grounds. She's That's a 